Hi guys, this is Kendall. Um, today we are going to talk about a topic that a lot of students get confused about and that is three-point crosses. So why do we do three-point crosses? What's the purpose of them? So the purpose is to determine the loci of three genes in an organism's genome. So the principle is that a heterozygous parent is crossed with a homozygous recessive parent and the phenotypes of the progeny are recorded. And these phenotypes, these numbers of the phenotypes, help us to determine where exactly the genes are located relative to one another. So we can make a gene map based on these numbers of progeny that we find when we cross these two. So the sort of question that will be asked on an exam could be complete the last column of this table, this type column, and then make a genetic map of the genes. So to start off, the way that you determine which genes are, which uh, combination of genes are the parents, the single recombinants, and the double recombinants is the parentals will always have the highest numbers. So you see here we have 305 and 275, and those are the two parentals. The double recombinants will have the lowest numbers, and that here is 22 and 18, and the single recombinants will be the remaining. So that is the 128, 74, 66, and 112. So we start by doing that. We get a basic outline of which are the parentals, which are the double recombinants, and which are the single recombinants. So we have that, now what do we do? So the next step is to figure out which gene is in the middle. So we do this by writing out the parental genotypes with the double recombinant genotypes underneath. So these first two rows here, the plus VLG and B++, are the two parental genotypes, and then the two underneath are the two double recombinant genotypes. And the way we determine which gene is in the middle is the single gene with a difference between the parental and double recombinant is in the middle. So we see here that on the left side, we have plus plus, V plus, and LG, LG. So the difference there is the V plus. And then when we go to the right, we have BB plus V and plus plus. So the difference there is the plus V. So we know that V is in the middle. So you may be asking, how do we know which order we write the parentals and the double recombinants in? So if we were to write the parentals the way that they are and have one double, the double recombinants switch, we would see two differences between the parentals and double recombinants. So we would have B plus, VV, and LG plus. And we want just a single difference between the two. So we know that that's not the correct order to write the genes in. So moving forward, we know that V is in the middle and that's what we're given right now. So normally we would rewrite the parental genotypes with the correct gene in the middle. But since it's correct as is, then we can move on. So the next step, we have the parentals written out. So we can now determine which genes participated in which single recombinant um, species. So we have these two parentals and the way that we determine the single recombinants and which genes participated in them is we can draw arrows connecting one of the genes in each parental to two of them in the other. So we see here we move between the two parentals one time and that represents a single recombination. So this, these arrows would represent a single crossover between genes B and V. So we can continue this process until we have classified each single recombinant and which genes have participated in them. So now that we have this, I filled in the rest of the table for you. I hope that you were able to figure it out as well. And now we can find the RF values and draw the genetic map. So the RF values, what they tell you is how far apart the genes are from each other. And we do this by, so between B and V, we have B and V single recombinants laid out over here. So we add the double recombinants. We're gonna include the double recombinants numbers in both calculations. So we're going to do 22 plus 18 plus 66 plus 74. And those are the numbers that we have for the BV single recombinations, the two BV single recombinations. And we divide by 1,000 because that's the total number of individuals in this sample. And we get 0.18. And we have to convert to centimorgans because that is the quantification method used in these genetic maps. So that would be 18 centimorgans. And we do the same thing with V and LG. We have V and LG, two V and LG values, so we include the two double recombinants, 22 plus 18, plus 128, plus 112, 
divided by 1,000 and get 0.28, which is converted to 28 centimorgans. So then when we draw our genetic map, we obviously have V in the middle, and B is going to be closer to the V than V is to LG. And then we label B and V is 18, V and LG is 28. And then there's our genetic map. So at the end, you'll probably be asked to do additional calculations, including the expected number of double recombinants, coefficient of coincidence, and the interference value. So to get this expected number of double recombinants, we multiply each value, um, each RF value, before we convert it to centimorgans by the total number of individuals. So we get 0.18 times 0.28 times 1,000, and that gives us 50. And she will sometimes ask you for the number of one double recombinant genotype, so you have to divide this value by two. So remember that, that was on one of my exams, so just look out for that. And to calculate the coefficient of coincidence, that calculation is the observed double recombinants divided by the expected double recombinants. So in this case, we see 40 double recombinants. That's the values that we are given. And we just calculated that the expected number is 50. And we divide these two and get 0.8. And then to calculate the interference, you do 1 minus the, value, minus the coefficient of coincidence. So 1 minus 0.8 is 0.2. And you'll probably be asked to interpret this value of interference. So if interference equals 1, then there are no double recombinants because it would be 1 minus 0. And this means that there's extreme interference. So the ability to double cross is interfered with. So that's how you would explain that. So that is all I have for you. And I wish you the best of luck on your exam.